right, folks. So for my section, I am going to tell a little bit of a story about a couple of different conferences, large scale online conferences that we ran this year at Workado. Right. So the two conferences I'll talk about are Automate, which is our big annual just mega conference that we do in May. And then we have a smaller, but still large, like still thousands of attendees. We have a smaller event in August called Magic. Uh, that's more community focused, um, like zero lead, lead gen. Um, really, both of them are awesome events. Um, but, you know, I want to talk about what what did we do at Automate? And, you know, what were some of the challenges we ran into with this large scale conference? And then what did we sort of how did we learn and adapt and improve before we ran our second one in August? Okay, so starting with Automate, some of the challenge and some of these are good challenges to have right but uh so we had like well over 10,000 i think over 12,000 registrants for automate in in may and um so that is inherently sort of a challenge when you're dealing with scale like that we also had you know one one challenge we experienced was we were using for this a uh, platform called hopin we, we use that for um all of our big events at least recently and um and we found that there was sort of a double gated registration process because we we wanted we were choosing to have people register through our marketing automation forms but then they also somehow sort of had to get registered as a user and have a profile on the event platform in order to attend and so that you know we we felt that there was some room for improvement there right we didn't want to make it seem like too like a double gated registration process we also we needed as these people were registering we needed to get calendar invites out to folks and quickly and have them be uh you know we didn't wanted to basically streamline that process of sending calendar invites not make people click buttons to you know add to calendar or whatever we just wanted to send them the invite Right. Um, we also had just dozens of sessions, right? In addition to well over 10,000 people, there were just, there was a lot of content, a lot of sessions. And therefore, if you work in the marketing side of things and you're working in a marketing automation platform or the, or the, the CRM side, you know, you might have lots of corresponding programs or campaigns that, like, because we wanted to track, we wanted to track engagement down to the session level, right? So it wasn't just, did they attend our mega event it was like okay they attended and which sessions did they attend for how long and so to achieve some of that it was just a lot of manual export and like manipulating spreadsheets and then loading manually into marketing automation platform which which is never you know i working in spreadsheets is, is never um my ideal way to transfer data right so that was sort of a challenge Okay, so between between this automated event and the magic conference that I'll talk about in a second here, we found that overall, some of our findings about challenges were essentially that the native integrations are that are out there sometimes just they're, they're, a lot of times they're not quite exactly how you would want them. And so they end up hampering a lot of and, and or just forbidding a lot of efficiency right and preventing you from automating certain things that you wish were automated and you know any sort of repetitive process right it seems like it has the potential for automation so if we can automate it we want to so yeah that was a frustrating thing about a native integration um we also found that this prevented us from getting because we had to do a lot of manual work to get this data in at the session level and all that it it sort of uh, slowed down, you know, it didn't prevent us from getting insights to our sales reps and executives, but it slowed down our ability to generate reporting dashboards, um, reports for specific reps to show who had attended what and for how long, and all that sort of stuff, um, as well as producing these, these dashboards that would communicate impact on revenue and show the meetings coming out of the event. Right. Um, but just circling back to magic here for a bit, I, I don't want to, I want to make sure I paint a picture that uh, a lot of things actually went really well with magic. So 
you know, just as 10,000 registrants was a challenge, it was also, that was a big win for us. So that was good. Um, we had a lot of attendees and we were doing really from the beginning with Automate some really cool stuff where we were using Mercado to, as we would collect registrations, you can see on the right here, we would like stream these registrations out into a Slack channel so that for folks who wanted to keep a real time eye on who was registering from minute to minute and hour to hour that they could see that in Slack. And we then did the same thing with meeting alerts, right? So as meetings were getting booked after the event had concluded, we wanted to be able to stream those into a Slack channel so that the SDR managers could see and the event host and all that could see the fruits of their labor, right? Um, see those meetings coming out of the event. And, and then sort of between those, I guess, between registration alerts and meeting alerts, we, had, we also were able to automate the SDR follow-up, right? So when you have 12,000 plus people at your event across a bunch of different sessions and it's all kinds of people, there's no way to follow up with 12,000 plus people in like a personalized way, right? And not all 12,000 of those people are going to be people you want your reps spending time on, right? Whether it's your CSMs or SDRs. So what we were able to do even in this first go at Automate was to, was to sort of, we created a tiered system. We had like four or five tiers of leads where tier one was the best, you know, great job title, great persona, new logo, whatever. And, and we would, we sort of created this, this tiered system. And then we were able to automate, um, automatically add these different tiers of leads to corresponding outreach sequences for the SDRs to then sort of go personalize the message and follow up. But we were out, we were able to just stream them into the outreach sequence that they should be in right for the SDRs. And then finally, we had some very cool dashboards come out of the event. Um, so, and I want to give a shout out for all, all of this work and uh, the dashboards and some of the other stuff we'll talk about in a minute here. Uh, Glenn and Michael on our team did an awesome job, like no way that we could have run this event without them. And so for example, Glenn created this dashboard here that communicated our impact, the, the event's impact on meetings being scheduled and ops being created and the revenue and pipeline and all this sort of stuff, right? So this, this is probably more appropriate for like executives and people who wanna get like an overall view, right? As opposed to seeing like streaming meetings being booked in Slack and all that, that's kind of fun to see, but we needed this to communicate up the chain at the end of the day to show what the impact was of, of our event. Um, and then further down on the dashboard, we were able to see, we really got down again to the session level. You know, we were, we were able to produce reports that showed session level engagement and session, session level participation to see which content was really driving the, the most engagement for us and really attracting the, the audience that we wanted. Okay, so moving on to magic which is our event in august more community focused for those of you out there interested in business systems and automating across the enterprise you can uh, search for uh, the community is called systematic by workado so you can check that out join it's an awesome spot and so what changed for this event was you know sort of sort of nothing changed in the sense that we we are always seeking to improve and automate more but also, everything really changed from an ops perspective for this because between the time we hosted Automate and the time we hosted Magic, uh, we created this connector uh, for Hopin, right? So this, and, and when I say we created a connector, I mean on the Workato platform. So, and, this, and when I say we, I mean like we, like marketing ops, like Glenn and I wrote, like we used Workato's software development kit to build a custom connector. So this is, this is Ruby based, it's a Ruby based SDK. Some of you have probably never used an SDK before. I had not either before I joined Workato, but if you're, the, like, if you're the type of person like me who like I learned HTML and CSS through looking at email code and 
way back when wanting to change the color of my MySpace font, you know, and you start to sort of like, you see the code and it's obviously patterns in it and you start to learn, okay, I, I can play with this a little bit. So Workato has a connector SDK. So it's such that if Workato doesn't natively offer a, an official connector for something, like we have connectors for Marketo, Slack, Eloqua, Salesforce, all that stuff, right? Um, but then, you know, Hopin, which is a little bit newer of a platform, which we were using, um, we didn't have a connector for that that's officially supported by the product team. So we, the MOPS team, just created our own connector and it allowed us to hit a bunch of different API points on, on Hopin and really create our own customized workflows that allowed us to sort of, um, you know, a, a lot of the, well, I'll talk about these in a second, but it really decreased a lot of the manual work required for hosting these events. So a couple things came out of this, right? Um, as far as pre-event improvements, we were able to eliminate the double, I was talking about how we had a double gated registration process in the first time, and we were able to really streamline that so that anytime anybody registered for magic through our marketing automation platform, we immediately sent them a calendar invite. You know, we didn't have to use any of those buttons that say add to calendar or anything. We just immediately sent them a calendar invite. And in that calendar invite, the reason we were able to exclude or sort of eliminate the double registration process is because we would go pull this magic link from, uh, from Hopin and we would include that in the calendar invite so that the day of the event, they would then you know, look at their calendar, click the link to attend the event. And that would sort of, that would automatically create their profile for them on the event platform. And then they would be there ready to attend the event, right? So it didn't feel so double gated at the beginning. Uh, whereas before it was like, they were filling out a form and then being sent an email to go create their, their profile on the Hopin platform. So this was much more streamlined and helped improve our, uh, our conversion rate. Okay, uh, post-event uh, improvements, right? So we were just kind of talking about some of the ways that this Hopin connector changed how we approached the event from a pre-event standpoint. And then post-event, and this is actually kind of like during the event and post event, um, there was sort of a separate category of improvements that we saw, right? So we were able to stream uh, attendance information into our various platforms. And so, so that like, and at the session level, right? So we would be on like a daily or and it's toward the end, even hourly basis, we were able to pull attendance data and and transform the data from how, from how it came out originally in a, in a CSV from Hopin via the API, we would use Workato to transform that data, get it down to the session level, who attended what, for how long, all that, and then stream that into our marketing automation system and then have it flow into CRM. Uh, so that was really nice. We, this, this also therefore, you know, as the data flowed into the CRM now is sort of creating these we're populating these dashboards, which for Automate had taken us a few days to really get the data together, but uh, we were able to essentially create those and populate the data in real time. We also, ultimately, I would say it, it, there was definitely a time investment up front, right? Creating the connector and creating these recipes to automate this. So we probably didn't save any time necessarily on magic itself but because these recipes are reusable we're going to be able to continue to use them every time we host these big events we see it producing a, a substantial return over time so worth it all right so uh what is next we like or, you know what do we see for the future basically more automation we always want to automate more um, one of the things I envision is that we'll be able to go in, our events team will go into hop in for our next big event and they will put together the event, all the sessions and all that. And then we'll have a recipe that can go and automatically create the program infrastructure within Marketo to create that master program. And then a bunch of child programs and corresponding campaigns on the Salesforce side so that Workato or Marketo users don't need to go in and actually create all the infrastructure for hosting the program. It'll just be cloned and created via the API. So 
we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. Um, and we want to continue to work with our partners to create more connectors and optimize data transfer and then really just templatize these recipes for use, right? So one of the cool things about Workato is I, as a user, can create a recipe and share my re recipe out to the community. And so I don't think we have these recipes quite at a point right now where there it would be super useful for me to share with the community because I don't know if it could really be just executed the same way from between one company and the next. But um, but we want to work on getting it there and then share it out with the community. So I'll look forward to seeing, uh, you know, hearing feedback from you guys when we get there. Thanks for your time today. Have a good one. Thank you.